Hello everyone, welcome back to PTED Chemistry channel. So this is um, a, a tutorial on um, topical MCQs. This involves topic 5, which is chemical energetics um, in the Cambridge International Curriculum. So this is a statement. It's basically asking you the definition on the standard enthalpy change of formation of CO2. If I just write out the balance equation showing the change, it's the enthalpy change when I form one mole of the substance from its element. The element is going to be C and O2. It's balanced now because one carbon and two oxygen atoms, which exist as diatomic molecule. Okay, all the reactants and the products under standard state. Okay, so there's a gas at room temperature and pressure. So that is the same as enthalpy of formation of CO2. If you realize the other definition, which is the enthalpy of combustion of carbon, that is the enthalpy change when you burn one mole of the substance in excess oxygen. Okay, they don't tell you the product, but it's all the reactants and product under standard states. Okay, under standard conditions as well. So that is going to be equal to the enthalpy change of combustion of carbon. Okay. So that is one of the uh, few identity that you need to keep an eye out for based on just writing a series of equations, which you will have done when you first started learning about chemical energetics. If you are still unsure, you can catch my short tutorial um, on um, conceptual development. If you look on the playlist under A-level concepts on energetics, there should be a couple of videos in there that can help you understanding this. But this is in addition to whatever you will have read in your own time. Yeah? So A is the correct option there. It's got nothing to do with the bond energy or the CO bond because we can't use bond energy calculations because we still have a solid there. Bond energy can only be used to calculate enthalpy change when all the reactants and the products are in the gaseous state. All right. Um, moving on to the next question. So we got hydrazine. And in case you don't know, hydrazine is not trigonal planar. It has got nitrogen which is group 15 so five valence electrons so it's got one two three bond pair therefore it still has one lone pair there this is supposed to be 107 degree just like ammonia where it's trigonal pyramidal and 107 degree anyway that's not the point of this question this question is asking you the enthalpy change or atomization of one mole of gaseous hydrazine so that means when I decompose that, I want to get two nitrogen atoms in the gaseous state. Okay, this is gaseous. So really we are looking at forming the two nitrogen gaseous atoms and four hydrogen gaseous atoms. And since all of these are in the gaseous state, by definition of the atomization of one mole of it, you are essentially breaking all the covalent bond. You can use the bond energy calculation. Here you have one time NN bond to be broken, and you have four times NH bond to be broken. So that's why you need to break. And you are not forming anything. So forming nothing at all, because there's no bond between the individual gaseous atom. So even though they ask for enthalpy or atomization, which this one is, okay? So the enthalpy or atomization is just breaking the one time NN double bond, uh, sorry, single bond. So this is an NN single bond from the data booklet that I have, okay? So depending on the data booklet you have, your value will vary slightly, okay? So we said that the enthalpy change of reaction is the sum of the bond energy broken minus the sum of the bond energy form okay so that will give me plus 1720 kilojoule per mole it's endothermic obviously because you are breaking all the bonds without forming anything your calculator will not show you a plus it's up to you to think about the enthalpy change sign especially in the theory paper it so happened that this is a MCQ paper, so you're a bit fortunate there, but if this is a theory paper, you gotta have a sign, a value, and a unit, especially for calculations involving enthalpy changes. So next question is just a random reaction. 
So NO react with CH4, giving you N2 gas, CO2 and H2O. The fact that you're forming N and triple bonds means that you will release a lot of energy when you form this N and triple bond because breaking it requires a lot of energy. Making it or, or forming it as a product will release a lot of energy. Okay, small slightly will be exothermic. The product will have large enthalpy change of formation. Is that true? Hmm. Let's think about it. Um, the product will have large enthalpy, large negative enthalpy changes of formation. Despite me saying that um, the, the formation of NN is going to give out a lot of energy, but that is the reaction that produced the NN from the product. However, you got to take in mind that the formation, the enthalpy of formation of nitrogen is actually zero because it's forming one mole of the substance from its element, which is also N2. So that's why the enthalpy of formation of any element is zero. But the overall reaction is it's bound to be exothermic as a result of you forming the really strong and N triple bond. Okay, but it's got nothing to do with breaking this triple bond and NO. It's got more to do with the other substance that you're forming. You're also forming very strong C double bond O as well as very strong OH. Okay, so the answer, the best response there would have been D. Okay, so 5a part 4, this is to do with, they give you two equations. The first of which I hope you can see is forming one mole of the S substance from its element, okay, all in their standard state. So this is equal to the enthalpy of formation of SO2. And then the second one is equal to the enthalpy of formation of SO3. Um, if you are unaware of where I get this formula from, which I'm going to show you now, you can watch my short tutorial videos on um, air level concepts on st standard enthalpy changes of formation and combustion kind of calculations. Okay, you, inside those videos, I outline where I get this general expression uh, for evaluating the enthalpy change of reaction okay so i suppose i can show you here you don't necessarily need to draw the hair cycle every single time because of that relationship so this relationship says if you are given the enthalpy change of formation which i'm just writing down um, just so that it's clear to you you don't really have to it's already been given there in the question obviously there's going to be zero just like in the previous question formation of any element is zero because you know forming the element forming this substance from its element there's no change whatsoever the definition of enthalpy of formation is for forming one mole of the substance okay so if i form if i form okay i better put this on top all right so that way you can hopefully see what i'm trying to do sulfur plus oxygen so there's three over two oxygen altogether nope there's three more of oxygen altogether solid gas the oxygen doesn't matter that much this is going to be the enthalpy of formation of SO3 but multiply by two because you are forming two mole of SO3 this is going to be two times the enthalpy of formation of SO2 because you are forming two mole of SO2 Hess law says the enthalpy change of a reaction does not depend on which pathway you take as long as you start from the same reactant and end up at the same product. So you're going to get enthalpy change of reaction is the minus the enthalpy change of formation of the reactant. In fact, it's not just that, it's minus the sum. Minus the sum of the formation of the products. Sorry. That is a plus because I'm going this direction first. And then minus the sum of the formation of the reactants. You can of course be expected to draw this kind of hair cycle in a balanced equation manner by labeling them correctly and the correct multiples in the paper 2 or paper 4 theory paper. 
but in this kind of calculation we can always just use the expression uh, because that's how we get the expression from this is the sum of the entropy of formation of the reactant this is the sum of the formation uh, sum of the entropy of formation of the product okay so there's going to be two times minus three nine five it seems like i've done a lot more work here but um, i probably wouldn't draw up the hair cycle every single time um, from now onwards because now that you have seen what is happening as with any calculations it's best to do it stepwise instead of putting everything into the calculator because it's easier for you to check your working at the end as well so sign value and unit as if you are approaching it um, as if you're approaching it you know in a in a in a theory paper okay and it makes sense that we know it's exothermic because this is your classic reversible reaction in the contact process ever since all level second so study you know the full reaction is exothermic but it's not just by knowledge we have just proven it with the use of energetics value here yeah? so this is the last question of this short tutorial video um, this, they give you the energy cycle so going up is going to be positive meaning endo coming down is exothermic because it's negative so what substances are present at level y in this diagram hmm. so what substances are present at level y so this involves the formation of co2 so if we start off from the constituent elements we are looking at the elements having the entropy of formation of zero okay so you have the carbon solid plus the O2 gas all right so both of which are elements and the entropy of formation will be zero so in terms of exothermicity there is the formation of the CO2 so this is going to be the CO2 and then we need to think about atomizing atomizing the carbon to gas and then we can have O2 gas but we also need to think about atomizing the oxygen into gaseous atoms so that is the atomization of oxygen times 2 which is also equal to 1 times the energy of oxygen oxygen double bond because since both of them are in gaseous state you can relate that to bond energy breaking one mole the covalent bond okay both of them in gaseous state yeah to give you gaseous atom the atomization of oxygen is going to involve the formation of one mole of gaseous atom since we are forming two more gaseous atom the relationship has to be multiplied by two for this to be equal all right so this one there i assume will be the atomization of carbon but equally these two could be the other way around okay but essentially at level y you must have the free gaseous atoms so it has to be the free gaseous atoms then the free gaseous atom recombine and they form the bonds to give you CO2 there. So the answer there must be A. Alright, so um, this is the end of this short tutorial video. I'll see you in the next video um, on more tutorial MCQ questions where we power through, where we work through the theories involved in, in, in uh, eliminating the distractors and stuff. So if you enjoy these tutorial videos, do subscribe to the channel and then uh, share with your network of friends. Uh, to benefit more people. Thank you for watching.